A uh, big game against the Hammerheads and who else are we going to see tonight, Jeff? The Punits. The Punits. It's supposed to be the uh, hardest team that they've faced so far. What do you think, Jeff? I think it's definitely an important game. What do you think the Hammerheads have to do here tonight, Dave? Well, to win this very important game. Defensively, I think obviously they're going to have to keep uh, catching the ball, hopefully in the air, thus making the out. If not, on the ground to, say, shortstop and throw at the first base and hopefully making that out. And just keeping the people off the base and making sure no runs are scored. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I was speaking to the uh, batting coach earlier today and decided as a, an offensive uh, strategy to try and score as many runs as possible. I think if uh, they stick to that game plan, Jeff, there should be no problem tonight's outcome. Well, we're looking forward to an exciting game ball here tonight. It's a wonderful Florida evening. The gale has died down. The winds are down around 40 miles an hour, so it should be perfect weather for baseball. Now, Jeff, hold, Jeff, uh, hold on a second. You know both of us are members of this team, and uh, do you think we're going to be able to see any play out there tonight? I seriously doubt it, Dave. Uh, my batting average couldn't uh, couldn't uh, get any worse if I shoved the bat up my ass. And myself, Chris, would probably uh, rather put in Monica or one of the girls out in the stands instead of putting me on the field tonight, I think. Yeah, so I guess we're stuck up here running this stupid camera and acting like a couple of jerks. Okay, well, uh, we'll take a commercial break and get right back to the, uh, to the game. Absolutely. How do I make it stop? Over yeah. on pitch here, we have the veteran uh, Bob Westman, whose strikeout record is simply uncanny so far. And? And on first base, we have Bill Ferreira. Second base, uh, the veteran Dennis Calandra. Shortstop, Doug Cowery. No, that's Doug Hatch, isn't it? Yeah, well, whoever. Ha Howery, right? Speak up. And uh, over on third base, we have Tom... Tom Overly, right. And out in the outfield, we have Dave Maggi, Chris Steele, the manager and coach of this tough, tough... Slow down. What's Chris we're... Steele, uh, the uh, manager and interim manager, taking over for Bob Westman, perfect season so far. Doug Hatch out there in the, uh, whatever center of that field that is. And then we've got Woody Nixon, the utility man here at the Hammerheads. Got a batter up at plate, and here we go. Game has resumed. Not resumed because it's never started, so I guess it's uh, us semi. Bob. Second what's the ball count, Dave? What's, what's the second count, ball man? for the veteran pitcher, Bob Westman? He throws a perfect, well, it looked like a perfect strike to me, but the umpire called that a uh, ball, so it's ball three, no strikes. And he walks the first man. Four straight walks. Highly uncharacteristic of Bob. You can see him shaking it off now. Getting ready to knuckle into the second batter. Guy with the Giants, uh, giant sweatpants and New York Mets hat. Obviously a New Yorker of some kind. Onto the plate. That's ball one. Bob probably still feeling the effects of uh, the weekend's festivities. He's, uh, he's got that strike in there. He's found his groove and will probably continue to do that. One, two, three from here on out. Got another one in. He's taking a swing at it. It's the Bill Ferreira the first. He got it. Oh, and the man is at it second, but safe at first. Almost played it into a double play. Very, very, very good heads up ball by the Hammerheads team. Absolutely. I understand these punics are all ex-felons. Ex-felons, and if you can uh, take a look at that behemoth that is getting ready to come up to, well, he's getting on deck right now. I used to work with him at Lurie's, by the way. He used to work in the stock room. What an asshole. Okay, we've got a lefty up right now. And Bob, Bob has found that groove. Boy, he's just humming in there, humming him in there, humming him in there. He's taking this way up, way up, way up. Hatch is coming in. No, it's going to be Calandra out in the outfield, gunning it back to Ferreira, who makes a good catch to keep the man on first. We've got two outs here in the first inning, top of the first. That was Calandra who caught that ball? It was Calandra, the second baseman, who caught that ball. Some say he should have retired a long time ago, Jeff, but me, as long as he can make those kind of plays, I think he can stay with the team as long as, as they're around. Let's go another. High ball to Maggi, he's back there, he's spotting it, he's got the out. Three outs, one, two, three.
Bob showing a little bit of problem at the first uh, first batter, but got his sea legs back and way to go, Dave. Now, now showing us the stuff that Bob Westman's made out of. The team's coming in, getting ready to take their bats. So far, their offensive strategy has worked out rather well, if you've noticed, Jeff. When the ball's hey, knocked up in the air, they do catch Bump it. Or if it's dry, driven right into the uh, right into the infield, it's picked up by the infield man and thrown to first for the out. All right. And there's the Goodyear blimp. Okay. Take a look at those Hammerhead fans. They're, they're the backbone of this team, I think. It's what helps uh, spur them to win. And then if you take a look over at the Punitz, uh, Punitz stands, there's what, two, three people over there. It's really embarrassing. So no wonder, no wonder they've got not only the psychological edge, I think, on this Punitz team, but certainly the uh, edge... I believe it is a, it's a record crowd tonight. For Hammerheads game, without a doubt, and particularly for the Hammerheads fans. Coming up first to bat is number four, Chris Steele. Like I was saying before, Jeff, he uh, has just taken over the manager's slot from Bob Westman. Takes a look at his throw. catch by the outfielder, the rock, Chris Steele of that base hit. Looked like a good base hit to me. But sometimes that offense is just, uh, I mean, that defense is just ready for it. What are the names of some of these? I have absolutely no idea, Jeff. I didn't pick up a uh, card with any of their names on it. And if I remember right, at Luria's, we used to call the, uh, the catcher there Fatty. Fattier tubs or whatever, along those lines. Tom Lewis, veteran uh, first baseman of the Hammerheads, now reduced to catcher. Ooh, ooh. I don't know if you took a look at this, Jeff. Uh, you, I don't think the camera is on it, but it doesn't look like the pitcher has totally got his head screwed on for this game. He totally missed that ball that was thrown back at him. Oh, he calls it a strike. I would I would have to... Uh, to disagree with that call, but that's why I'm officiating. Yes. I guess he's the Tom Lewis with a spectacular base hit to the outfield, gotten by the uh, center, center right hand of center right fielder, putting Tom Lewis a base. One out. One out. Man on first. Dave Maggi, the big bat here on the Hammerheads. Meat, as affectionately he's known throughout the ball club. And because when he hits the ball with the meat of that bat, it's no stop. It's a tough play to, oh, and he just overthrows, overthrows. Sitting Tom Lewis to third. Tom Lewis is holding up at third. Dave Matthews is holding up at third. Oh, oh. I missed all of that action. An awful, awful play by the uh, short. Center, uh, the shortstop there. Shortstop, that's what I've been meaning to say this whole time. Shortstop, awful play to second base. Could have easily had, uh, play, pulled that into a double play, Jeff. One out, one out. Don't mind me, Jeff. I'm just looking to see if you have any cigarettes right now. And obviously, you do. And get one of these lit up and underway here. Doug Howry to a nice little chopper to, to right. I mean, let right field, exactly. Tom Lewis comes in for the score, making it the first, the first run scored here. It's two outs, two outs so far in this inning. Big Maggi still at first. Tom Lewis comes in on a big, big sacrifice fly by Doug Howery. Being congratulated by Tom Overly and Woody Nixon, the man at bat now. Woody's had an awfully, awfully good year. Very cocky individual, but with the type of uh, ball play he's been Showing thus far, he certainly deserves that attitude of his, Jeff. Oh, on the plate. Oh, 
What are you hitting a foul ball? You can tell. I don't think there's anyone harder on Woody Nixon than himself. He expects 110%. He tries to put that out. Sometimes he falls a little short, but 100% by Woody Nixon is well worth 200%. Looks like he's going to catch it. It's an out for the third out. And we'll see Woody, Woody's tantrum on the way in. Uh, well, he seems to be taking this rather cool. No, he's shaking his head. He's berating himself. Oh, characteristic. Oh, the air helped me up. Yeah, he start making his usual excuses about why the ball hung up in the air like that. But we all know he just kind of scooped it a little bit too much, right, Jeff? Absolutely. Uh, but he's known for his excuses, I believe. In fact, I think he makes excuses for everybody on the team, doesn't he? Makes excuses for everybody he's on the, the team. He's the designated excuse man. Well, he takes it over from a, from a fine veteran, and I am speaking about myself, Jeff about virtually every bonehead play I made in the last couple of years. Since this team's gotten so deep as far as talent, there just seems to be no place for guys like us anymore, Jeff. You know, the little utility guys that used to come in, make that play every once in a while, but mainly, you know, just cause the team to lose runs. And um, Bob's pitching him, pitching him good. If I were him, I'd be pitching him to the inside. Don't you agree, Jeff? Absolutely. Uh, he's George, got two strikes. He's... This man looks like a clenched fist. I understand, though, his playing has improved considerably since his sex change operation. I agree with that. That's hitting right to Doug Pass. He's got the out. So the big man, he sent him out first to try to get, uh, get a man on base. That comes up a little short. Bob Westman doing showing the cool display that he normally does out here on this field. Pleasure to watch Bob Westman, six-year veteran here with the Hammerheads, maybe seven. Looked like a strike to me. I didn't see it, Jeff. I couldn't really comment on that. It's a nice chopper to steal the manager of the, uh, of the Hammerheads. Taking it to Dennis to make sure the man does not advance, but he is safe at first with a good solid base hit to... Uh, to right center field, left center field, right, right center field, left center field. Which one? Would that be right or left center field, Jeff? Which? Doug uh, Hatch out there. Uh, Stage left. Let's go, next round, next round. Hammerhead's coming up. Another batter, one out. So far in the top of the second inning. Oh, and Bob pulls a nice, nice little strike out there for the first pitch to this ba unknown batter. Oh, it's a nice chop. Bob got a glove on it, but wasn't enough to pull it down for the out. That's, you, see the, you see that play that Bob just made, the backup dog overly on that, just in case uh, the, pit and the ball wasn't in line for overly to catch it? No, I didn't. But, this goes to show you the, uh, the vet veteran temperament of Bob Weston. Always thinking, always thinking. Okay, this is yet another unknown batter. Maybe I should shimmy down the pole and get the list uh, of the that's going out to uh, hold between Hatch and Steele. That's probably not present there. Man stays at third because uh, Howery, Howery had the ball, but easily picked him off. The, the bases are loaded. We've had a bases out. loaded situation. With Bob, number 20, up at that. Bob says he's found his groove on this, Jeff. He's definitely found his groove. Pop fly, pop, oh. I hate to brag, Jeff, but I think I might have had that ball had I been catching. I've seen you catch dozens just like that, Dave. Unfortunately, all those were in practice, weren't they, Jeff? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, Dave, I made a mistake. Now, that... Again, another fine example of the heads up ball by the ex-manager of the Hammerheads, Bob Weston. Had Dave Maggi caught that ball in foul territory that would have allowed the runners to advance, tying the ball game. Two outs, two outs against this Punix team. 
very critical pitch here. Bob comes one more in there. Strike one against the batter. I don't think you followed that man to first at the home plate, did you? No. No. Uh, I, was trying to follow. I think one of our other cameras got it though, so we can hit it to the end. I don't know, Jeff. I don't know about that. This is the only camera we have. Let's go, Gary! When it's still a two-out situation, this man is taking it on the first swing. Woody seems to be there. Three outs, strands, three, three men on base, and in the middle of the second inning, it's a uh, one-one ball game. Punits one, Hammerheads one. Bottom of two, one off. Okay. What's your analysis of the uh, play so far, Jim? Pardon? Yeah. Did you get that? What's your analysis? You got that, right? Okay. What's your analysis of the game so far, Jeff? I don't know. I haven't been watching. It. Yeah. I haven't been paying attention. Oh, oh. Hammerheads are sending up number 14, Tom Overly, the third baseman. Don't be surprised for uh, Tom to hit this right down the right field line. Dom's been uh, perfecti perfecting that uh, perfecting that particular hit, and I just hope the other team didn't hear me. Oh, yeah, another one goes by the pitcher. I wish you could catch that kind of action, Jeff. Um, went right by the pitcher. It was a very awful throw. There's a little of a, a little fracas up here in the stands between uh, Brian Edelman's young boy and uh, Tom Lewis's young boy, but apparently it's broken up and it's a nice little shot to second base. It looks like it's going to be easy out. It is. And I don't know what's with that pitcher tonight. He just doesn't seem to be able to get the uh, get the ball in the glove. Because he looks like he's trying to carry with two hands. He looks obviously embarrassed by uh, his display, and who can blame him? Uh, fine first baseman, Bill Ferreira, number 15, is up uh, for the Hammerheads right now. Now, you notice a lot of the Hammerheads will always take that first pitch. That's something that's still to, uh, in them in the uh, from the old... Manager, uh, one of those pop flies that Bill's been uh, trying to keep way, himself from way, doing. For obvious reasons, that's out number two. And uh, one can't worry too much about this Hammerheads team because the three out rally is the one thing they are known for in this league. The veteran Dennis Calandra. Knees not quite what they used to be there for the uh, pads that you see on both knees on Dennis Calandra. Dennis will get that, usually get that lead off head if he's in the first up situation, and when he's in a situation like this, can be the first man on base uh, so far in this inning. Going for the bottom of the second, if I'm not mistaken. Bottom of the second, Jeff? I'm the big I'm trying to run this camera. I can't figure it Oh, oh, yeah, he always likes that line. Likes that line. Brian, this is the middle of the second, right? Yeah, middle of the second. Brian Edelman, the fine catcher for the Hammerheads team, confirming that for me. Middle of the second. Veteran Dennis Calander up at bat. Nice little bloop. Nice little bloop over the shortstop. Like I said, good utility man. You can see why they keep the veteran Calander on, where most teams would have let him go years ago. Brian Edelman. Easily the most hot-tempered player here on the Hammerhead team. Kind of the gutsy, kind of the wild guy. And you see, Brian doesn't like to uh, do, uh, do what Bob asks and take that first pitch, but he did that time. And good eye, good eye, taking that that ball. One ball, one strike. Brian goes for it. Right there is now three outs, thus ending the second inning here. Randy Calandra on base. Yeah. Brian can't feel too happy about what he just, just did out there. Jeff Wilson, the editor and trapper. Don't know if we'll see any play from Jeff tonight. Always there to coach first base. And it's that kind of, hey, let me uh, let me be part of this uh, this game, no matter what small, menial 
worthless task I could possibly perform. Jeff is always there. Bob trying to ignore the camera. But we definitely saw him look up there. In the event of a foul ball in this direction, Jeff, I'll try to give you as much advanced warning as you would thought. I appreciate that, Dave. And I will not think twice about sacrificing my own physical well-being for the uh, protection of the equipment. Nice little hit. Oh, and Woody's not going to be able to get underneath it, so it's a good, solid base hit. Sending it to uh, the veteran Calandra, who catches Howard at second base to keep the man at first. That wasn't Calandra. Huh? That wasn't Calandra. Did you start the Calandra? Keep it flat, keep it flat, man. Bob's definitely found his groove, I think. I think we're going to see yet another seven inning ball game with Bob Westman at the helm. Let's, let's watch this pitching form. Well, we watched that pitching form in a nice executed ball there, Jeff. Let's keep the camera off, Bob Kelly. That's two balls deep. Second ball deep. Both almost identical pitches. Bob's going to knuckle down, give him a nice strike here. Yeah, that was it. That's what Bob's looking for. That's the Hummer. He's found his groove. which I think you missed, didn't you, Jeff? Uh, no, I got that. Good, we can look back at that and dispute the call all we What's want. What's the right? out situation, Dave? No out so far on this. Uh... Magic's got the out. Magic's got that magic out that we're looking for, first out. However, a lot of damage was done that time. A lot of damage. Three runs scored, making that four one punits. Hopefully another out. Bob hits him inside. It's going to the ball, but it looked like a good strike to me, there, Bob. Uh, Jeff. Bob pitches him inside. Oh, no, he called that first one a strike. 1-1. One, one. Watching this guy run is incredible.
seven one ball game. Things aren't looking good for the heads here tonight. We've got two outs. We need to put the nail the lid on the coffin on this one. center fielder of the Hammerheads. It's right here in my pocket, Jeff. Okay. Oh, a nice base hit out over shortstop. Also, you can't find a hammer That is dangerous for a runner like Doug Katz. It's a home run. It's a home run due to errors by the Punitz ball team. No one's covering first. No one covering first. No one covering any of the positions they're supposed to be covering. Thus making it a run on a simple base hit by Doug Hatch. That Come ought to on, run. Bob. Keep it alive. That Gosh, ought to do a lot for the morale of this ball club. That was just embarrassing play by the Punitz, uh, Punitz Ball Club. Hey, come on. Hit him down. Let's go. Man knows how to close up a hole out there. Just to ask any of the girls that he's going out with. We've got one out here with uh, Bob Weston. Bob Weston's off the order. Chris Steele. Taking over management duties here on the Hammerheads under the graft and uh, extortion charges against the former manager, Bob Westman. Still active pitcher, but until the grand jury's in on this case, it's seems like it's going to be a long time before we see Bob Westman in the manager's position. safely call the shortstop the black guy because he is the only black guy on the team. Henceforth, since we don't know the names of any of the players, shortstop will be known as the black guy. Tom Lewis coming up to bat, hoping to uh, spot some light and that offense. The shortstop simply cannot find a handle on that ball. And Tom Lewis is safe at first with two outs. Hammerheads are, are known for this, Jeff. Known for this three out rally. Send two batters. Three up. out rally, Dave? The se uh, two out rally, Jeff. Um, On me. They send batters up. They get the two outs, and then all of a sudden this, this team comes alive offensively. And Dave. Oh, nice hit. Just 
zinging them offensively right now okay. and putting himself in a definite scoring position as Doug Howry, the tough uh, shortstop to the Hammerhead team, steps up. Takes the first strike. Head, watch your head. Jay, to your left. Good eye on Doug Howry. He takes that ball. Takes the ball. Pausing for a second to wave to our enthusiastic fans out there tonight. Always excited to see you doing the play. I don't know if the run scored on that one. Nope. So it's 6 2. Going to the top of the fourth. 6 2. Top of fourth. Confirmed by the blue on second base. 6 2. Top of the fourth. Top of the fourth. 6 2. Well, what do you think should be the uh, hammerhead strategy as they enter at the top of the fourth inning defensively here, Jeff? I think they need to start uh, picking up on a winning attitude here. Winning attitude and just getting those outs, I think, is going to be essential. They might consider eliminating the stop-offs at the copper top before the game. Did that happen yet again tonight, Jeff? Oh, I believe it's a, uh, it's a tradition for the hammerheads. Bob's got one one up on this uh, on this batter. He takes a swing. Lowry. Easy out at first base. Now that's the type of play I'm used to seeing the hammerheads do, Jeff. Hammerheads are also known for that tragic inning, which I think we saw there in the third. Strike one to the black guy. Easy out. Good play by the veteran. And the veteran and indicted, Bob West. Tunis pitcher coming up to bat. Hoping to do himself a little bit of good. We've seen two out. One, two. Two balls, no strikes on the Punitz pitcher. I think we got enough battery life to uh, sustain the entire game, Jeff. Jeff apparently is uh, confident on the battery power of. Gets him out at the top of the four. Literally single-handedly. And Dennis, the veteran, second baseman, offering encouragement, picking his nose, wondering where it may have landed. He didn't, base get, runners. He didn't get any of that. And Chris Steele, the manager of the Got team. Got me picking my nose! <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't get a pick in his nose. That was one of course was I did. I mean, I didn't get anything else. Coming up, number 18, Woody Nixon, the right fielder. Yeah, I believe Woody's playing right tonight. I believe so. Right field, Woody Nixon. Let's. I feel uh, we're going to see a good leadoff single here by Woody, taking that first strike. <laughs> does go through before advancing to second base. Tom Overly, the veteran third baseman, eyeing that one for a ball. Finally come alive here for the Hammerheads. 
Keep it moving, Bill. Bill insisting that Woody stay at second. Got Line drive. Good on first and second, and no outs here in the middle of the fourth inning. Bottom of the fourth. Bill Ferreira, the apparently plagued first baseman over the last couple of plays, hoping to make up a little bit uh, offensively there. The pitch going over Fatty. Delay of uh, game right here a little bit. Come on, Bill. Looking him over, he's making this pitcher work, trying to wear him down, wear him out a little bit. Yeah. Good eye, Bill. Got to be there for you. And the count is. I can't really tell. I think it's three-one. Three balls, one strike. It's a full count now. Bill Ferrer, the uh, as I said, plagued first baseman, hoping to do himself a little bit of good here. Offensively for the Hammerheads. Make up for some of the. Right to the pitcher. Easy double play. Only uh, picked off the leadoff runner. Okay, one out. Come on, Denny. Keep it alive. Let's get a run around. Dennis Williams, if you remember, uh, on his last up, did hit. A good solid base hit. Hoping for a. Up, for a second performance on that. Bill um, hit the ball right to the pitcher, thus causing uh, the leadoff runner, who at the time was Woody Nixon with that powerful base hit. To be all for naught, apparently. Second ball called for a strike, so it's 2-1, 2-1. Must have missed the first pitch there. I didn't really know that it was 2-1, but. Going for the double play. Overly, however, does advance to third uh, third base on that play. They did get the second. Uh, uh, yeah, the second base, which is Bill Ferreira, probably making up for Lander, however, is safe at first. And Brian Edelman hoping to uh, put a little bit more of a score here for the Hammerheads. Still 6 2. 6 2. Bill take, I mean, Bob, Brian taking the first uh, first strike on that. Foul uh, ball making it 2 uh, 0 2. No balls, two strikes. Taking a good eye. Chancy, Chancy on uh, Edelman's part. It's going to go through. It's a good play at second, and no one scores. So the bottom of the fourth is still Hammerheads 2, Punit 6. Eventually, I think they're going to have to go back to their old game plan and just get in and back out. I think the whole Hammerhead uh, attitude can be summed up by the way Jeff uh, Wilson walked into the dugout that time. Jeff, head hanged down, not really the smiling, energetic, chatty Jeff Wilson that we're used to seeing, seeing here at the ball game. You can tell the things are not right, quite right here in Tampa, Florida tonight. Nothing but looks of steel determination. On the, uh, part of the hand uh, Phoenix bring up their left-handed batter. Bob hits the first strike. He's scooping it up to Woody on right field. He will take the ball out. So he didn't just land her up. So the Hammerheads can keep this up, then they'll go back for their offensive uh, Offensive drive here in the bottom of the fifth. Top of the fifth here, 6-2 Punis. First batter came up and hit a 
High ball over to right field. Woody Nixon getting him for the out. Bob taking a good strike here on the first pitch on number 14. 14 also scoops it up. Doug Howard makes the call. Ooh. Ball a little bit hanging up in the air a little longer than I probably expected. That's uh, causing it to drift due to the uh, slight breeze we have blowing through uh, lot three here at the Dick Greco softball complex. Bob Wilson, uh, seeming to settling down to another another strong, strong pitching outing for Bob Wesson. Send another uh, another ball to Fatty up here. Ball three. This guy is not even going to swing. You can tell that the ball. Like strike, it looked like a perfect strike to me, but like I said before, I'm not officiating this. I'm just doing the play by play. That bat is rested firmly on his shoulder. I don't think we're going to be seeing any. Well, he's acting like he's in a swinging posture now. Flat. Ball four. Sending the extremely huge catcher to first base. Bob needs to knuckle down a little bit, Jeff. Uh, looks like he's starting to show uh, early signs of fatigue here. Pitching yet another ball, a little bit deep and inside. This one's taking a swing out. Uh, how are we going to miss it? No way that ball is going to run to third base. There's no way. Even with that ball, we play that guy with out. No out so far. Both uh, the Phoenix batteries have gotten on to base. We've got one on second, one at first, with a fairly athletic looking gentleman coming up. Two two on. Go, Robert. Bob puts it back in there for a strike, showing that he still has the stuff that no, the deep innings has not gone down. Got the first out. Oh, this is one, two, three. Sorry about that. I thought there was no out. That was, you know, those trays. You know, sometimes, Jeff, you just get so caught up in the game that you real, don't realize that outs have been made. And going into the bottom of the five. It's six, two. Six tunics, two hammerheads. And I think uh, the tunics team better be looking for some major trouble here in the. Uh, Bottom of the fifth, because it's it's do or die time for the Hammerheads. They've only got two more innings left, and I don't know, Jeff, if you can if you can read if you the folks there can read the tension in my face, but it's only a fraction of what's going on in the faces of all the Hammerhead players. Bob Westman giving us a nice little smile and a nod up here. Bob, a big fan of us here up here in the, in the control booth. And I want to be one of the first ones to say that no matter what the outcome of the court case, I'm sure Bob Westman will be wearing that manager's uniform again. And I, I sincerely hope so. Though the team seems to be doing better with the, under the leadership of Chris Steele. Oh, nice card. You know, there were some calls for Bob Westman to uh, hang up the glove due to the controversy surrounding the veteran pitcher. There's our fans. But uh, you're missing the play down over here. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm watching the fans. Enjoying the game. One strike to Bob Wesson. On a blistery sunny Florida afternoon. All right, Bob, way ahead of him. Uh, take that back. There's no strikes on Bob Wesson. There's two balls. Bob Wesson has Doug, two balls. you want to make balls. a comment about that last half of that? All right, Bob, make a feed Never mind. Nice yeah. Bob Wesson showing, showing the other hammerheads how it's done here. Uh, characteristics. 
kind of ironic with uh, Bob being the ex-manager at the bottom of the lineup and the new manager, Chris Steele, being at the top of the lineup. Let's see if uh, Chris can show the same kind of leadership uh, offensively. He's calling it a strike. I kind of tend to think that was a ball, but... Chris also, he's coming in. Had he been in his normal Jay. position, that would have definitely Jay. been a base hit. Greg. Tom Lewis, the veteran. Designated hitter, I believe, this time around. I don't remember seeing him out in the field over the last uh, five innings of play. Strike against Tom Lewis. Strike two against Tom Lewis. Two strikes, one ball. One ball, two strikes, I mean. Watches the play. Bob is safe at second. There's still two outs. Dave Maggi, the big gun here at the Hammerhead. Meat coming up to bat. Probably seeing some explosive uh, bat work off of Mr. Maggi right now. They need the runs, and he knows it. He intends to give it to them. We could see possibly a out of the park, if not an in in the park home run coming up here. Imagine takes that first pitch for a strike. Looking for that groove. Inside. Waving that pitch by for inside. Pitcher setting at the first base for that third out, stranding three batters on base. Looking awfully a lot like the uh, New York Mets. You know, I can't help but think, Jeff, that uh, the manager of the Hammerheads team, Chris Steele, could possibly still be shaken up by the uh, sweep against his San Francisco Giants in the World Series. Probably one of the most embarrassing displays of. Uh, of ball playing done by any team in the World Series. Don't know if you realize this, Jeff, but it's been 13 years since the last uh, World Series sweep. Say what they will about the New York Mets. I think, however, they might have pulled out at least one win against the Oakland Athletics. And there probably wouldn't have been that long, disparaging break due to the earthquake out in uh, San Francisco Bay. Second base, second base. Ooh. Awfully, awfully lucky, lucky drop between Hatch and Howery, the two dugs on the Hammerhead Ball Club. Bad throw to Calandra, causing Edelman to pick up the ball, keeping the man at second base, who seems to be a little shaken up by, uh, by a slide in. Strike one called against the batter. Ooh, ball two, sorry, no strikes. Two balls. Strike. Two balls, one strike against the batter. Bob, 20. Solid base hit. Possibly going to be sending this man home, but. Tip. I don't think he's going to be making any hero type plays. He's going to be coming home for the tag. 
Man on first and third. Nice little chopper by Bob, number 20. Bob Ross from California gives his best. He called me before the game. He caused me to be a little bit late. That's why I couldn't help you with the setup, Jeff. Always happy to hear from our friends out in the uh, West. Chris is going to try to make the play at home. One out. Due to the injury on the man at third plate, I don't think he's going to be uh, taking that run to home. Staying where he's at. Okay, Jeff, keep your eye on the camera and I'll get that other cigarette lift for you. The black guy up to bat. Number 33, the black guy on the Phoenix team. Oh, he wanted to take it and should have because that was a strike. No chatter, which is characteristic of the uh, Hammerhead Ball Club. Not chop in the first. Go, Joe. 7-2. 7-2. 2-2. 2-2. Come to me, baby. Looking for out number three. Man on first. Foul ball. Foul ball. Way foul. But we get the intention that he intends to make here. He intends to try to hit it to right field. Which could be a mistake with Woody Nixon out there. Woody being one of the finest right fielders we've had out there since... Uh, Jim Wisniewski took his job up in uh, Chicago, not with the Cubs, of course, but with the Second City uh, Improvisation Group. In their training program, understand that besides being very cold at this time of the year, he's doing just fine. A little disappointed his Cubs didn't make it into the World Series, as is all of us, due to the pathetic display shown by the San Francisco Giants in the World Series. Legal pitch, and he took it anyway. Legal pitch does not keep a. Legal uh, pitch does not keep the ball from being inactive in this game. It was illegal, but he took a swat at it, and it was not a bad swat at all. He advanced uh, the black guy to third base. Himself at first. Two outs. Looking to put a lid on this right now. Bob Hums went in there for a strike, making this guy work. We've got 10 minutes left in this ball game. If uh, all goes right, we will see all seven innings. 1-1, one, one, deep on that second pitch to the left-handed batter. Ball ball into the uh, practice lot between lot two and lot three here, or is it one or two, or I think we're in beta. I, I have no idea exactly where we're at, Jeff. Welcome. Jeff Norton has been singularly silent on the camera replay so far. Another scoop. This guy might have to just put it way down front, Jeff, because he's hit it. A nice scooping ball up for a good grab. One, two, three. Bottom of six, seven two. The crowd just going wild. Just backing up this team 100%, which is characteristic. I've used that word a lot tonight, haven't I, Jeff? Characteristic. Um, that's pretty characteristic. Well, let me just say that it's apt apt of the uh, fans to show such heart, such uh, such support for this intense hammerhead team who is undefeated going into this game under the leadership of Chris Steele. Strike call to Woody Nixon on the first pick. Now Jeff, you being a uh, member of this ball club, you know why uh, we take the first pitch, don't you? Um. 
to the pitcher. And plenty of time to gather his wits and get the out at first. Woody definitely unhappy with what just went on there. Talking it up with the catcher. Bill throwing him his bat. Tom Overly looking to get on to base. Strike call against Tom Overly. Fly out to right field, number nine, the idiot. The idiot hasn't seen much play so far, but he put him out to right field. Bill Ferreira, probably going to do another one of his bonehead moves right here. Oh, it gets past the shortstop. Oh, my God. Nice little zinger there by Bill Ferrer to get himself up on first. Here comes that second act, that second out rally that I just can't help but pointing out, Jeff. It's been this way virtually every inning of the game. Second out, we get men on base. We start seeing things happen here offensively, and it's just exciting. It's tremendously exciting. I can't tell you how exciting it is. Does Calandra ignoring me? Chris, Chris Field telling Bill to hold at second base. Nice base hit by the veteran Philander. Taking that first pitch for that nice base hit down to the left field line. And uh, here we are again, Jeff. Two outs, and we got two men on base. Two men who hadn't been there previously before those outs. Absolutely. Strike one called against Brian Edelman, the catcher of the Hammerheads team. Units are literally falling apart here at the bottom of the uh, fifth inning here. Two outs, two runs have scored. Seven to four ball game. Brian, two outs, really be moving. Brian Edelman almost caught at first base for the out, but they threw the pitch in, causing Calandra to come in on the overthrown ball to first base. I'm sure you didn't get any of that, did you, Jeff? Not a thing. Strike called against Doug Hatch, number one, the right center fielder. Doug Hatch with a nice chopper. Up, Brian? Shortstop that gets Brian Edelman out at second base. Batty eight. Batty and eight. Top of seven, guys. Top of seven. Four, seven. Top of the six. Two more innings to uh, pull this ball game out, Jeff. What do you think your chances are? Well, if they can, uh, if they can start playing some hard driving ball. I think they've. Jeff, got I'm a sorry. The blue has just uh, corrected me. I have been uh, living under a fog, uh, apparently. Um, I thought it was the top of the six. It is top of seven. It is a do or die situation. They've got to put the lid on the punises right now. Make sure no other runs score, and they have got to put three runs to tie this ball game up in the center and tech innings. First batter comes up, nice for nice. Chris Gill coming in for the catch. Scares. They need two more of those to put the lid on the scoring drive by the Punises. Fat boy coming up to bat again. He is just a hulk of an individual, don't you think, Jeff? It's it's incredible, Dave. He actually looks bigger than when I used to work with him at Luria's. You used to work with this guy? Yeah. His name's Bill. Best known to us as Fatty. Nice hit. 
Zinging them offensively right now okay. and putting himself in a definite scoring position as Doug Howry, the tough uh, shortstop to the Hammerhead team, steps up. Takes the first strike. Head, watch your head. Jay, to your left. Good eye on Doug Howry. He takes that ball. Takes the ball. Pausing for a second to wave to our enthusiastic fans out there tonight. Always excited to see you doing the play. Can you hold up? I don't know if the run scored on that one. Nope. So it's 6 2. Going to the top of the fourth. Six two. Top of fourth. Confirmed by the blue on second base. Six two. Top of the fourth. Top of the fourth. Six two. Well, what do you think should be the uh, hammerhead strategy as they enter the top of the fourth inning defensively here, Jeff? I think they need to start uh, picking up on a winning attitude. Winning attitude and just getting those outs, I think, is going to be essential. They might consider eliminating the stop offs at the copper top before the game. Did that happen yet again tonight, Jeff? Oh, I believe it's a, uh, it's a tradition for the Hammerheads. Bob's got 1 1 up on this, uh, on this batter. He takes a swing. Sorry. Now that's the type of play I'm used to seeing the Hammerheads do, Jeff. Hammerheads are also known for that tragic inning, which I think we saw there in the third. Strike one to the black guy. Easy out. Good play by the veteran. And the veteran and indicted, Bob West. Tunis pitcher coming up to bat, hoping to do himself a little bit of good. We've seen two out, one, two. Two balls, no strikes on the Punitz pitcher. I think we got enough battery life to uh, sustain the entire game, Jeff. Jeff apparently is uh, confident on the battery power of. Bob helping himself left and right. One, two, three. Bob gets him out of the top of the four. Literally single-handedly. And Dennis, the veteran, second baseman, offering encouragement, picking his nose, wondering where it may have landed. He didn't, base get, runners. He didn't get any of that. And Chris Steele, the manager of the Got team. Got me picking my nose! No, he didn't. He didn't get a pick in his nose. That was one yeah. thing. Of course I did. I mean, I didn't get anything else. Coming up, number 18. Woody Nixon, the right fielder. Yeah, I believe Woody's playing right tonight. I believe so. Right field, Woody Nixon. Let's. I feel uh, we're going to see a good leadoff single here by Woody, taking that first strike. Drive does go through before advancing to second base. Good night, Tom. 
Tom Overly, the veteran third baseman, eyeing that one for a ball. Finally come alive here for the Hammerheads. Keep it moving, Bill. Bill insisting that Woody stay at second. We've got Line drive. on first and second, and no outs here in the middle of the fourth inning. Bottom of the fourth. Bill Ferreira, the apparently plagued first baseman over the last couple of plays, hoping to make up a little bit uh, offensively there. Pitch going over Fatty. Delay of uh, game right here a little bit. Come on, Bill. Looking him over, he's making this pitcher work, trying to wear him down, wear him out a little bit. Yeah. Good eye, Bill. Got to be there for you. And the count is? I can't really tell. I think it's three-one. Three balls, one strike. It's a full count now. Bill Ferrer, the uh, as I said, plagued first baseman, hoping to do himself a little bit of good here. Offensively for the Hammerheads. Make up for some of the. Right to the pitcher. Easy double play. Only uh, picked off the leadoff runner. Okay, one out. Come on, Denny. Keep it alive. Let's get a run around. Dennis Blander, if you remember, uh, on his last up, did hit. A good solid base hit. Hoping for a. Steps, for a second performance on that. Bill um, hit the ball right to the pitcher, thus causing uh, the leadoff runner, who at the time was Woody Nixon with that powerful base hit. To be all for naught, apparently. Second ball called for a strike, so it's 2-1, 2-1. Must have missed the first pitch there. I didn't really know that it was 2-1, but. Going for the double play. Overly, however, does advance to third uh, third base on that play. They did get the second. Uh, uh, yeah, the second base, which is Bill Ferreira, probably making up for Lander, however, is safe at first. And Brian Edelman hoping to uh, put a little bit more of a score here for the Hammerheads. Still 6 2. 6 2. Bill take, I mean, Bob, Brian taking the first uh, first strike on that. Foul ball making it 2 uh, 0 2. No balls, two strikes. Taking a good eye. Chancy, Chancy on uh, Edelman's part. It's a good play at second, and no one scores. So bottom of the fourth is still Hammerheads 2, Punit 6. Eventually, I think they're going to have to go back to their old game plan and just get in and get out. I think the whole Hammerhead uh, attitude can be summed up by the way Jeff uh, Wilson walked into the dugout that time. Jeff, head hanged down, not really the smiling, energetic, chatty Jeff Wilson that we're used to seeing, seeing here at the ball game. You can tell the things are not right, quite right here in Tampa, Florida tonight. Nothing but looks of steel determination on the uh, part of the Hammerheads field. These units bring up their left-handed batter. Bob gets the first strike. He's scooping it up to Woody on right field. He will take the ball out. Throwing it into Slander. So the Hammerheads.
Warheads can keep this up, then they'll go back for their offensive uh, offensive drive here in the bottom of the fifth. Top of the fifth here, 6-2 Punis. First batter came up and hit a high ball over to right field. Woody Nixon getting him for the out. Bob taking a good strike here on the first pitch on number 14. 14 also scoops it up. Doug Howard makes the call. Ooh. Ball a little bit hanging up in the air a little longer than I probably expected. That's uh, causing it to drift due to the uh, slight breeze we have blowing through uh, lot three here at the Dick Greco softball complex. Bob Wilson, uh, singing to settling down to another another strong, strong pitching outing for Bob Westman. Send another uh, another ball to Fatty up here. Ball three. This guy is not even going to swing. You can tell that the ball. Like it looked like a perfect strike to me, but like I said before, I'm not officiating this. I'm just doing the play by play. That bat is rested firmly on his shoulder. I don't think we're going to be seeing any. Well, he's acting like he's in a swinging posture now. Flat ball four, sending the extremely huge catcher to first base. Bob needs to knuckle down a little bit, Jeff. Uh, looks like he's starting to show uh, early signs of fatigue here. Pitching yet another ball, a little bit deep and inside. This one's taking some out. Uh, how are we going to miss it? No way that's going to run to third base. There's no way. Even with that ball, we play the guy with the out. No out so far. Both uh, the units batteries have gotten on to base. We've got one on second, one at first, with a fairly athletic looking gentleman coming up. Bob puts it back in there for a strike, showing that he still has the stuff that no the deep innings have not worn down. We've got the first out. Oh, this is one, two, three. Sorry about that. I, I thought there were no outs. That was, you know, those trays. You know, sometimes, Jeff, you just get so caught up in the game that you real, don't realize that outs have been made. And going into the bottom of the five. It's six, two. Six units, two hammerheads. And I think uh, the Punis team better be looking for some major trouble here in the uh, bottom of the fifth because it's, it's do or die time for the Hammerheads. They've only got two more innings left, and I don't know, Jeff, if you can, if you can read, if you, the folks there can read the tension in my face, but it's only a fraction of what's going on in the faces of all the hammer, Hammerhead players. Bob Westman giving us a nice little smile and a nod up here. Bob, a big fan of us here up here in the, in the control booth. And I want to be one of the first ones to say that no matter what the outcome of the court case, I'm sure Bob Westman will be wearing that manager's uniform again, and I, I sincerely hope so. Though the team seems to be doing better with the, under the leadership of Chris Steele. Oh, nice card. You know, there were some calls for Bob Westman to uh, hang up the glove due to the controversy surrounding the veteran pitcher. There's our fans. But uh, you're missing the play down over here. Oh, sorry, sorry. Watching the fans on the stand. Enjoying the game. One strike to Bob Wesson. In a blistery sunny Florida afternoon. All right, Bob, way ahead of him. Uh, take that back. There's no strikes on Bob Westman. There's two balls. Bob Westman has two balls. you want to make a comment about that last up at bat? All right, Bob, make it be there. Never mind. 
being at the top of the lineup. Let's see if uh, Chris can show the same kind of leadership uh, offensively. He's calling it a strike. I kind of tend to think that was a ball, but... Chris also, he's coming in. Tom Lewis, the veteran. Designated hitter, I believe, this time around. I don't remember seeing him out in the field over the last uh, five innings of play. Strike against Tom Lewis. Strike two against Tom Lewis. Two strikes, one ball. One ball, two strikes, I mean. Watches the play. Bob is safe at second. There's still two outs. Dave Maggi, the big gun here at the Hammerhead. Meek coming up to bat. Probably be seeing some explosive uh, bat work off of Mr. Maggi right now. They need the runs. He knows it. He intends to give it to them. We could see possibly a out of the park, if not an in in the park home run coming up here. Dave Maggi takes that first pitch for a strike. Looking for that groove. Inside. Waving that pitch by for inside. Pitcher sending it to first base for that third out, stranding three batters on base. Looking awfully a lot like the uh, New York Mets. You know, I can't help but think, Jeff, that uh, the manager of the Hammerheads team, Chris Deal, could possibly still be shaken up by the uh, sweep against his San Francisco Giants in the World Series. Probably one of the most embarrassing displays of. Uh, of ball playing done by any team in the World Series. Don't know if you realize this, Jeff, but it's been 13 years since the last uh, World Series sweep. Say what they will about the New York Mets, I think, however, they might have pulled out at least one win against the Oakland Athletics. And there probably wouldn't have been that long, disparaging break due to the earthquake out in uh, San Francisco Bay. Lucky, lucky drop between Hatch and Howery, the two dugs on the Hammerhead Ball Club. Bad throw to Kalander, causing Edelman to pick up the ball, keeping the man at second base, who seems to be a little shaken up by, uh, by a slide in. Strike one called against the batter. Ooh, ball two, sorry, no strikes. Two balls. Strike. Two balls, one strike against the batter. Bob, 20. Come on, come on. 
Solid base hit. Probably going to be sending this man home, but due to his hip, I don't think he's going to be making any hero type plays. He's going to be coming home for the tag. Man on first and third. Nice little chopper by Bob, number 20. Bob Ross from California gives his best. Called me before the game. Caused me to be a little bit late. That's why I couldn't help you with the setup, Jeff. Always happy to hear from our friends out in the uh, West. Chris is going to try to make the play at home. One out. Due to the injury on the man at third plate, I don't think he's going to be uh, taking that run to home. Stay where he's at. Okay, Jeff, keep your eye on the camera and I'll get that other cigarette lift for you. The black guy up to bat. Number 33, the black guy on the Phoenix team. Oh, he wanted to take it and should have because that was a strike. No chatter, which is characteristic of the uh, Hammerhead Ball Club. Nice chop in the first. Seven two. Seven two. Two down, Two down. Come to me, baby. Looking for out number three. Man on first. Foul ball. Foul ball. Way foul, but we get the intention that he intends to make here. He intends to try to hit it to right field, which could be a mistake with Woody Nixon out there. Woody being one of the finest right fielders we've had out there since uh, Jim Wisniewski took his job up in uh, Chicago. Not with the Cubs, of course, but with the Second City uh, Improvisation Group. In their training program, understand that besides being very cold at this time of the year, he's doing just fine. A little disappointed his Cubs didn't make it into the World Series, as is all of us, due to the pathetic display shown by the San Francisco Giants in the World Series. Legal pitch, and he took it anyway. Legal pitch does not keep a. Uh, legal pitch does not keep the ball from being an active in this game. It was legal, but he took a swat at it, and it was not a bad swat at all. He advanced uh, the black guy to third base. Himself at first. Two outs. Looking to put a lid on this right now. Bob Holmes went in there for a strike, making this guy work. We've got 10 minutes left in this ball game. If uh, all goes right, we will see all seven innings. 1-1, one, one, deep on that second pitch to the left-handed batter. Ball ball into the uh, practice lot between lot two and lot three here, or is it one or two, or I think we're in Beto. I, I have no idea exactly where we're at, Jeff. Jeff Norton has been singularly silent on the camera replay so far. Another scoop. This guy might as well just put it away that way, Jeff, because he's hit a nice scooping ball up for a good grab. One, two, three. Bottom of six, seven two. The crowd just going wild. Just backing up this team 100%, which is characteristic. I've used that word a lot tonight, haven't I, Jeff? Characteristic. Um, that's pretty characteristic. Well, let me just say that it's apt apt of the uh, fans to show such heart, such uh, such support for this intense Hammerhead team who is undefeated going into this game under the leadership of Chris Steele. 
drive call to Woody Nixon on the first pitch. Now, Jeff, you being a uh, member of this ball club, you know why uh, we take the first pitch, don't you? Um, to the pitcher, and plenty of time to gather his wits and get the out at first. Woody definitely unhappy with what just went on there. Talking it up with the catcher. Bill throwing him his bat. Tom Overly looking to get on to base. Strike called against Tom Overly. Fly out to right field, number nine, the idiot. The idiot hasn't seen much play so far, but he put him out to right field. Bill Ferreira, probably going to do another one of his bonehead moves right here. Oh, it gets past the shortstop. Oh, my God. Nice little zinger there by Bill Ferrer to get himself up on first. Here comes that second act, that second out rally that I just can't help but pointing out, Jeff. It's been this way virtually every inning of the game. Second out, we get men on base. We start seeing things happen here offensively, and it's just exciting. It's tremendously exciting. I can't tell you how exciting it is. Does Calandra ignoring me? Chris Field telling Bill to hold at second base. Nice base hit by the veteran Philander. Taking that first pitch for that nice base hit down to the left field line. I'd rather have the single than a double down the line. And uh, here we are again, Jeff. Two outs, and we got two men on base. Two men who hadn't been there previously before those outs. Absolutely. Strike one called against Brian Edelman, the catcher of the Hammerheads team. Units are literally falling apart here at the bottom of the uh, fifth inning here. Two outs, two runs have scored. Seven to four ball game. Brian, two outs, really be moving. Brian Elman almost caught at first base for the out, but they threw the pitch in, causing Calandra to come in on the overthrown ball to first base. I'm sure you didn't get any of that, did you, Jeff? Not a thing. Strike called against Doug Hatch, number one, the right center fielder. Doug Hatch with a nice chopper. Up, Brian. Shortstop that gets Brian Edelman out at second base. Bad eight. Bad and eight. Top of seven, guys. Top of seven. Four, seven. Top of the six. Two more innings to uh, pull this ball game out, Jeff. What do you think your chances are? Well, if they can, uh, if they can start playing some hard driving ball. I think they've. Jeff, got I'm sorry. A you just uh, corrected me. I have been uh, living under a fog uh, apparently. Um, I thought it was the top of the six. It is top of seven. It is a do or die situation. They've got to put the lid on the punises right now. Make sure no other runs score, and they have got to put three runs to tie this ball game up in the Senate and Tech Dreams. First batter comes up, Mike for Mike. Chris Gill coming in for the catch. Scores. They need two more of those to put the lid on the scoring drive by the Punises. Fat boy coming up to bat again. He is just a hulk of an individual, don't you think, Jeff? It's it's incredible, right? Hey? 
he actually looks bigger than when I used to work with him at Luria's. You used to work with this guy? Yeah, his name's Bill. Best known to us as Fatty. Strike he right in there. Those pitches out, he? Well, look, he's, he's in a batting posture now. Either that or he's going to take one of the biggest dumps in the line. He's going to drop in there. Calandra. Possibly should have had that. With the now you think with Dutu is incredibly slow pace of running around the bases that he may not be a threat, but he was able to get to second base on that one little blooper that he knocked in. This one's definitely going to catch. Elephantine running around the bases, he should have nailed them again at first, but Bill, the fat guy, is still safe and set at first base with two outs against the units this team. They've got to shut this down right now. Right now. Here it comes. The guy's going to take a swing. It's a nice fly out the steal. He's going to nab it. This is it. Yeah. This is the bottom of the seven. It's four seven hammerheads. They've got to get three runs. Tie up this ball game. Five runs to win. Get it now. Get it now. Okay, guys, come on. Any ball for this game would be over. Yeah, oh, any ball. Yeah, fine. You alright? Back to your bottom. I saw you and I figured you probably don't even have that. These hammerheads are coming out swinging. Bob West will come out swinging. Remember last inning, uh, or the inning before that, Jeff, Bob made a spectacular base hit. Fatty trying to call his men to uh, pull in center field a little bit. There was a strike, it hit the plate. He called that a strike? He called that a strike. What? Oh my God. Bob answers that. He did not like that call one little bit, Jeff. And to show how much he didn't like it, he got himself on the first base. Amazing. Oh, my God. Way to go, Bob. Way to go, Bob. The grand jury could just see that. I'm sure they'd make him an innocent man. Chris Steele, manager. Stepping up, taking that first pitch for a strike. You can see, you're probably going to see Chris swinging on this next one. And he does. Fly out to when you get back. right center. The uh, extra hitter, Tom Lewis, coming up, number 11. Hoping to keep this ball club alive. Hoping to send the tying run up to the plate. Tom Lewis just getting off a commercial shoot somewhere in uh, St. Augustine, Florida. Ooh, lucky break for Tom Lewis. That is a foul ball and he's still able to cause some damage. And Gus and Curry in some help for the Hammerheads team. I'm running low on battery power here. I hope I can get the end of this game. Jake, come to your right. Jeff, you'll, it wouldn't surprise me if you were able to blow the entire exciting win of the Hammerheads game. Is it rolling now, Jeff? Yes. Yeah, okay. Luckily, uh, during that little shakeup, we've got two. We're looking at two outs, and yeah, you know what that means, Jeff. This is where the hammerheads come alive. Dave Maggi, hoping to get on the base, taking the ball. It's been a long time since I had to be a camera technician like that, Jeff. It's, it's 
kind of exciting there for a little bit. Maddie's going to definitely take the swing with this one. That's it. Ball game's over. Hammerhead suffered their first loss here on videotape against the Punixes. I think they could have used a little bit of Jeff Norton and David O'Hara out there on the ball field today. But regardless, without them, they have uh, lost this ball game to the Punixes. This is the first ever televised game of the Hammerheads, and it's uh, fortunate that it ended up in this loss. Heartbreaking loss here at the Dick Greco softball complex. Hammerheads in characteristic form going out. I don't know if I'm going to be able to keep up the commentary for much longer. The fans also, also <laughs> horribly disappointed and distraught over what's happened here today. It's it's really sad to see what how how the fans are affected by it. Uh, uh, oh. I'm about to run out of power there, Dave. So, coming back Sum over it up, here. Dave. Summing it up, uh, Jeff, the defense was lacking, I think, this time around. The offense was even more lacking. Uh, had they were able to put the things together, then it may have, uh, may have come out differently than it had. But what was the score again? It was 7-4. Seven, 7-4. Seven, four. Seven, four. Uh, shuddering loss against the Punis team, the suffering their first loss here in the softball season.